una de las peleas más esperadas, no nada más en la división de 168 libras, sino en el mundo del boxeo, 25 de marzo, tendremos frente a frente. ¿Qué es el plan contra David Benavides? Kelly Plant está aquí con nosotros en el estudio. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Eh, muchas veces pensamos en los deportes del combate. Ustedes son profesionales de deportes de combate y lo que pasa arriba del ring se queda ahí en el ring. Pero aquí hay un tema muy personal con David Benavides. ¿Por qué se llegó a este punto? Um, you know, I think in the beginning it was just a agreeing to disagree on who's better. You know, I think I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. I can beat you. No, you can't. You know, just normal fight banner, but then it, I think it just continuously grew and where it kind of went over the line for me is when um, Jose Sr., David's dad, and some of his team members, you know, started talking about my daughter, Aaliyah, who's, you know, passed away in 2015. Um, just saying things like, I don't need to talk about her no more and I'm just using her to get famous and stuff like that. And then even going to like like pictures on Instagram of me and my daughter, Aaliyah, laying in the hospital bed together and things like that. And um, You know, if you got something to say about me, that's fine. If you got something to say about my dad or my coaches, that's fine. That's fine. But um, you know, once you start bringing women and children and and things of that manner into it, that's like a line that you really can't come back from. And so uh, that's when it became really personal for me. Obviamente es personal. Se quieren hacer daño a cada uno. ¿Cómo le puedes hacer daño tú a David Benavides? I can hurt him the most by just winning and beating him. And, you know, I do that by sticking to the game plan, staying calm and cool, collected, and um, just listening to my coaches, continuing to grind hard in training camp, making sure I don't take my foot off the gas, and uh, then come March 25th, just getting in there and doing what I do best. Cuando hablamos de David Benavides, boxeador eh, que tiene muy buenas condiciones, pero que ha tenido también sus problemas fuera del ring, eh, no sabemos si está haciendo la mejor preparación para llegar en peso. Tú en la conferencia de prensa le dijiste primero, tienes que llegar en peso. ¿Crees que es una posibilidad real o era más bien lo que se dice antes de, una, de un combate? A big chance, no pun intended, huh? <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, I don't know. That's for him to figure out. You know, the weight is the weight, 168 pounds. It's a WBC title, uh, or fighting for the WBC interim yeah. championship. So, you know, he's got to hit that 68 pound mark if he plans on, you know, continuing to be champ or having any chance at it at all. So um, that's for him and his team to figure out. I'm someone I stay in shape year round. I keep my weight close year round. I train year round. So, um, you know, there's not going to be, there's never been any issue, nor will there be, you know, come March 25th. Se dice que el ganador de esta pelea se va a enfrentar a Canelo Alvarez. So they say the winner of this fight will go and fight Canelo Alvarez. You've been there. Yeah. It was your fir first loss, tu primer derrota. Uh, what did you learn from that fight that you think could help you in this fight? ¿Qué aprendiste de esa pelea con Canelo que te puede ayudar contra Benavides? Uh, yeah, you know, I learned a multitude of things in that fight, and the biggest thing that I took away from it was uh, just the experience. You know, experience isn't something that you can buy. It's not something that you can fake. You gotta, you gotta go through the fire to get it. And um, I've done that. I did that with Canelo. And um, I come up short, and obviously I was disappointed. But um, Canelo is a great fighter, and um, when two great fighters meet up and they face each other, a lot of times some guys got to lose. And um, but I feel like I went out um, valiantly. You know, I went out on my shield. I didn't quit. I didn't quit on the stool. And then even afterwards, I was still trying to continue and fight, um, even though the ref made a good call. And um, so just experience. You know, experience is key. It's a major factor going into these big fights. Antes de esa pelea contra Canelo, tú y Canelo también tuvieron. Un, un, un pleito en la conferencia de prensa, pero me acuerdo mucho sus palabras después del combate, cuando eh, tú le dijiste que no querías insultar a, a su madre porque tú también has perdido a tu, a tu mamá y Canelo te dijo, eres mi familia, a partir de ahora todo bien. Me pregunto si hay algún escenario si después de esta pelea contra Benavides puede pasar algo igual. Um, you know, at the press conference between me and Canelo, uh, you know, He was telling me things like, uh, you're going to see, you're going to find out. And then um, I'm like, okay, mf -er. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. Um, he took that some type of way. He pushed me. In Mexico me. has a different context, that kind I, of I thing. So, that. Right? I, think, I think you understood that yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. But also, to be fair, he has said that word yes. to other fighters That's as right. well. That's right. So he speaks English good enough. He knows the difference. And he knows that I wasn't speaking about his mother. And then obviously with my own personal situation, with my mom not being here no more, he knows. And I'm sure a lot of other people know that I would never speak on um, women, children, you know, just as I spoke on earlier. So he knew that, but he wanted to make a thing of it. And um, 
But hey, we, we got in there and we battled it out um, like men do. And we were able to shake hands afterwards and nothing ever got too out of hand. You know, with um, them speaking on my daughter and, you know, some of the things that they've said about her and about me. Um, again, I don't think that there's any coming back from that. Okay. Caleb, obviamente estás acostumbrado a la atención. You're obviously accustomed to the, the fame, the attention. Pero con Canelo era fue otro escalón, fue otro nivel. Did you realize that maybe with Canelo, like, this was a different type of attention, a different type of notoriety that you've been used to? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't feel like it was overboard or too much, but it was definitely, you know, the atmosphere on fight night was obviously a lot different than anything that I experienced before. And, um, you know, as soon as I walk out of the tunnel, just, you know, it's about 18,000 boos. Um, you know, them hating me and not liking me and, you know, what, whatever it may be. But um, I feel like I handled the moment well. And, uh, you know, th again, that's a piece of experience that I get to take from that fight and carry into these other fights. And after you've experienced, you know, that type of atmosphere, it makes a lot of these other fights seem a lot smaller. Eh, ya te preguntaba, Hércules, sobre tu experiencia y lo que aprendiste enfrentando a Canelo. Eh, Canelo perdió contra Vivol y yo sé que es una categoría de peso diferente, pero yo me pregunto si el mundo del boxeo, peleadores en su buen momento, porque tú estás, tú tienes 30 años, estás encontrando tu prime, Gennady Golovkin ya era un peleador de 40 años que no pudo con Canelo la última vez que se vieron, pero el mundo del boxeo aprendió algo, Vivol les mostró algo de cómo vencer a Canelo. I mean, um, you know, I feel like I had quite a bit of success myself. Um, when me and Canelo fought. And obviously hindsight is 2020. You're able to look back on things and say, man, I wish I could have done a little bit more of this or a little less of that. And then obviously seeing him fight uh, Bivol and seeing the success that Bivol had, you know, it's easy to look on TV and be like, you know, oh, you know, if I do that, you know, I could have success. But, you know, sometimes watching things on TV can be deceiving. And just because, you know, you're able to see it, you know, everyone has different fighting styles. Everyone brings different attributes to the table. and so. There are things that I've seen that I feel like that I could, you know, use and um, take and put in my arsenal if me and Canelo, you know, or when me and Canelo are able to have that rematch. Um, so, yeah, you know, Bivol, he's a great fighter. And, um, you know, but when great fighters fight each other, someone's more than likely going to have to lose. Me and Canelo fought, I lost. Canelo and Bivol fought, Canelo lost. You know, when he fought Floyd, he, he lost. You know, Roberto Duran knocked out by Tommy Hearns. You know, Muhammad Ali knocked out. You know, you can go down the list throughout history and, you know, all the greatest, all the biggest fighters have been knocked out. And, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not a great fighter. Hey, Caleb, it's great having you in studio. Best of luck. You had the knockout of the year in 2022 against Anthony Durrell. We're going to show it right now. I was going to ask you to, to, to do it again with her. Not, not going to be the case because that was, that was bad, man. You went to the body, then you went to the head. That was a beautiful, that was a beautiful thing. Best of luck against Benavides. Uh, we'll be watching, of course, and uh, we'd love to have you in studio again. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, man. Damas y caballeros, Caleb Plant con nosotros aquí en el estudio.